We're about to walk you through the best ways to grow your social media and reach more people through short form content on all different social media channels. Short form savages, how to monetize your content. Firehook, I'd stop scrolling. Yeah. Today, I've got Andrew Stroh and JB Morrill. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for having us. We originally met in a program, a mastermind that we were in. So uh, it's called Tribe Accelerator. Connected on there, found out that we both run the exact same business and uh, hopped on a few calls. You actually reached out to me, told me about PodFest. I didn't know anything about it. It was a last minute trip for me. Booked my flight and yeah, we, we just met like a couple days ago, but we've just been We've been vibing. Yeah, me and JB got connected. We've been Zooming here and there. Finally got connected in person for the first time. Really just been out here kicking it, shaking hands, meeting people, having a blast. Savage people like yourself. Yeah, and like yourselves. So tell me a little bit about both of your backgrounds, like how you first got into what you guys do, which is video, and we'll get into that a little bit deeper. But So I had a group of friends. Uh, we were all into fitness. We used to do like the cool calisthenics videos and whatnot. Nice. We were just filming a bunch of videos of each other, and after a while... Uh, a bunch of people just took notice and were like, hey, can you film a video of me? Can you film a video of me? And eventually we got our stuff together, got our act together, and we were able to turn it into a legit business, invest in our education, invest into our equipment, just open up a real business, provide it as a service to other entrepreneurs, other you know, thought leaders in the community and everything. And that's kind of really how it took off. And it's just been a grateful ride ever since. Right, right. now there's five of us partners and that's we awesome. have a team of a total team of 16. So 11 video editors that also work for us and help us wow. bring our visions to life. What were some of the challenges of that, building that team out? It kind of came out of necessity from the whole COVID. So we would do like a lot of filming and editing. COVID kind of really wiped us out, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of like the in-person filming, because, you know, a, a decent amount of our business was kind of like events, in-person gatherings rings really that got all wiped out so we had to find a way where we could make remote offers and help people to where we weren't have to be there but we could still provide them a service it was like a team of five and we would actually all like we had no clients at the time mm -hmm. so we would actually like be door dashing grub hubbing on the side yeah and that way we could pay our editor to help us make our own marketing content Wow, okay. And so really it began of like us making our own social media videos and you know, through that, that's kind of how we got all of our clients. So we live, preach and breathe social media for client acquisition. Gotcha. So what, what did some of that client acquisition through social look like? Was it like running ads? Uh, not even. It's actually all organic. If you do it organically, you got to put in more work. If you do it, kind of run some money behind it, then you can do a little bit less of like the grunt work, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So kind of have this saying on our team of like, be the CEO of your social media. What that stands for is content, engagement, and outreach. Mm, okay. And so you got to post content as much as you can, as much different type of content as you can. You got to engage with all of your current friends on your timeline. And then the last one is outreach. You got to continue to add new friends. You got to continue to outreach with new messages and stuff like that. And really, if you just do all three of those every time you open up a social media app, you're bound to grow. You're bound to make new connections and honestly stick to it 30, 60 days. You're going to get some clients, I promise you. That's awesome. So you're just like continuing that process and eventually get the word of mouth out there a little bit more, get clients. What is the average client for you like? Yeah, um, we work with a lot of like online coaches and course creators, people that have some sort of online offer that they can monetize. We're just here to help them get more exposure with that. Um, so it's all like post filming editing, essentially? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So they just kind of film everything they need and you guys wrap it up all nice and perfectly edited? P pretty much, man. So we'll help cool. them like create their virtual studio setup, kind of like you have an awesome one here. Thank you. Uh, thank we help you. our clients with that and then uh, help them kind of set their own videos up on their iPhone. They film it themselves and then they send that footage to us to be professionally edited. What led you to hiring the first like extra person outside of the, just that team of five and, and what has been the process like being able to like delegate it out to that many people? Do they have different types of editing roles or is it like all just a similar kind of role? Yeah, great question, man. Um, so our first ever editor, he's been with us since the very beginning. Uh, he's the OG. Uh, he's now like the manager of all of our other editors. Gotcha, okay. Uh, he's amazing. He's like 
really helped bring uh, all the problems on the editing side down. And he's just a leader. You know, when you get connected with those people that are leaders, you can just tell, man. Yeah. Um, and so you definitely got to treat them right. Definitely got to do everything you can to, help, you know, provide them with a great opportunity to where they want to stay as well. Uh, not easy at times, but yeah. um, very much worth it investing in your own team, investing in your own company. What did that look like for your company specifically? Is it like uh, probably pay raises, I would guess, but like just yeah. kind of putting them in a position to manage? How did that look for you specifically? Yes. Yeah, um, so treating people right, obviously the the biggest exchange of value is they do work, you pay them. So for sure, pay raises, things like also time off, like with uh you know any type of request for time off it's like yes man you always do your job right just let me know and it the day is yours very cool um other things like health benefits you know all the just side benefits that come with it um yeah we try to literally provide the whole farm for everyone that's awesome and then kind of switching gears a little bit going over to ujb what was some of your background like as you were getting into video how did you get into it in 2020 i started my TikTok. Originally, I, I started it to grow my audience to market my clothing brand at the time, which was Resist Fit. So after actually, it was my fourth video, it blew up to a million views, um, gained some traction there. I gained about 20,000 followers. And dude, after that, it was just posting consistently every single day for the next two years. I did eventually hit around 500,000 followers. That's where I originally started out. I guess if you went even further back, I started a YouTube channel when I was a freshman in high school. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the DJ device Launchpad, but uh, it was this music device. And I learned a lot through, you know, video editing there because there was a lot of color correction and cuts and transitions and so I guess that's where you could, you know, originate all my, my video editing skills. I was forced to learn Final Cut, which was a very, I guess, complicated software to learn oh, as yeah. a freshman in high school. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, that's that's originally where I got, you know, all my experience and all my, my skills from. After the TikTok following kind of happened and like and you decided to kind of make this into a business, how did that kind of form? Because as we know now, you have kind of made it into a business where you've got different clients you work with similar to his company. What did the process look like kind of going from working on like the personal brand building to working with clients? As I was growing that TikTok, I was learning a lot of, you know, what how can i improve my short form in order you know for it to perform even better um you know you could look at my my first video compared to my last one and it was just a complete different um you know change in quality and text and and every you know everything about the short form um that you know made it so much better and so I essentially, uh, I got banned back in November. And uh, so I wanted to take all that experience that I had gained and, and my skills in, so in social media growth to an agency. And so I started up an agency. I met this guy around the same time. And so he was teaching me a lot about, you know, how the structuring and the systems of an agency. Um, and yeah, I've never taken on that type of, you know, responsibility beforehand, you know, putting out content for clients, you know, it was always a responsibility for me to do it on my own TikTok. And so, um, it was definitely a new, you know, new, new feeling. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you get the right people around you. Uh, you know, he's not the only one that I know that, you know, run this type of business. And so you get the right people around you and, and, you know, it can just accelerate your, your success. So talk about some of the challenges of going from just working on your own stuff to working with clients and like, and, having to deal with like different types of people and, and manage expectations, stuff like that. You know, going into it, um, I didn't realize that, you know, different clients are going to want different things. Uh, you know, when I was first beginning, like I had originally, you know, thought that, you know, I had this specific type of video that I wanted to create for, you know, each client. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when my first client came to me, it was like a completely different idea. Yeah. And so I think that's, that's one thing I had to, you know, learn to adapt to because, you know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of these videos I had not created before. I had a very themed down, uh, you know, video for my theme page and for my TikTok. And so, Technically, I've been editing for two years, but I had never edited 
this type of content that you know this new client wanted so that's definitely definitely a struggle of mine um that i had to kind of kind of overcome when kind of teaching yourself to do new do it new ways and like work with new types of content i guess yeah 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 and and new i guess new uh techniques at editing too i've learned a lot um you know just having that responsibility has put the pressure on me to learn new um, you know, new things in editing and, and new ways I can use the software. And, and honestly, I, before I even started the agency, I had no um, knowledge, past knowledge with Premiere Pro. So that was one thing I was actually having to learn. I had been using Final Cut, you know, for the past two years. And while I did have the editing background and I understood Final Cut completely, you know, I'm going to a whole new Premiere, a whole new editing software. And so, you know, it was a completely new template for me. The fundamentals of them are, I'd say, fairly the same, you know, with the timeline and, and effects and transitions and stuff like that. But just learning the workings of each one and yeah. like what what's the difference between, you know, what what are their cap- capabilities and stuff? It's it's definitely a big step. Um, and I'm still learning as we as we go. But yeah, dude, it, it definitely was something that I had to really focus on, you know, the first month of of the starting this agency so what a yeah. lot of what a lot of people don't realize is that like on the basic fundamentals it's it's actually somewhat similar but when you get down to it to like the keyboard shortcuts like the secret like shortcuts mm-hmm. if you can save two seconds every two seconds you cut your time in half yeah and so that's like where the nitty-gritty details like get different when you switch from platform to platform gotcha that makes sense and have you found that Premiere Pro is kind of the best for it? Um, I think Premiere is mostly the industry standard. A lot of folks who get into it start with the Adobe softwares. Um, that's what it seems like, yeah. If you have a Mac, that's where like Final Cut comes into play. Gotcha. Um, okay. But even then, like everyone who's like a creator loves the Apple like s- ecosystem, and mm-hmm. then they love Premiere Pro, Lightroom, all the Adobe softwares as well. So. They kind of, it's like a big debate. It's like Sony versus Canon. Let's talk a little bit about PodFest. I, I think it was very interesting how we all kind of just met like serendipitously. Yeah, I was going to say, bro, I just checked the email. Nathan, he won the photo contest. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. That so sick. Yeah, one I of our other that. friends that we met there, there was like a photo contest for PodFest where so you just cool. enter and you get to win like a... <laughs> Free I, tickets next year. I free think. tickets next year. Yeah. I, I think he said it was free tickets next year or like one of two different kinds of softwares. But yeah, PodFest was really wild. It was, um, I think you've been to a big conference before, you said, but it was both of our first big conference. And yeah. I was pretty amazed personally. I mean, just the, the sheer networking of it. We all left with like stacks of business cards every day. Oh, yeah. I've got like, pockets full. I've got like 53 tabs open on my Safari with a <laughs> link tree on each of them or something. Like yeah. it's just crazy. And like, just got all these like guest appearances lined up and like other people to have on the podcast. Nice. How was it from, um, from the other perspective for you guys, as far as like finding potential clients? Yeah, dude, a lot of people have you know, uh, we, we're, we're obviously not going to go into this, you know, expecting to sell anybody, you know, during the conference, but a lot of people have shown interest. And we've also, even if they haven't shown interest necessarily for using our service, it's very eye opening. I was just telling him today is like, it's very eye opening to see how many people don't understand short form and, who, yeah. and how many people like need it. Um, you know, a lot of I, was I think even, this is a great segue to get into short form. I yeah, was yeah. amazed at that too. Just how many, so many people that were there that have been doing podcasts <laughs> for years and years. I mean, I, I haven't even gotten to a full year of it, but I started with video just cause like kind of read the writing on the wall, yeah. but so many people that have been doing it for like sometimes even a decade or more that I met that have been going to this for years are not doing video at all. They're just doing audio and then audiograms and stuff. And yeah, yeah I mean, to an extent you can grow a listenership, but you really can't take advantage of social media. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, No, I mean, that's, that's the thing with, especially with podcasts is you have to be utilizing short form. You have to be utilizing video in in general, but you know, short form is, is really blowing these, these podcasts up and you know, it it allows you to really highlight, take, just take all the highlights from your podcast. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd say it's close to impossible to grow a podcast unless I don't know, unless you have a a huge capital to, to invest in a mega nice, you know, you know, studio and everything. I, and 
and like guests, tons of marketing. Yeah, get mar- marketing and guests and everything. You know, I think short form is definitely the easiest route to go when it comes to Organic, growing a podcast. Like yeah. organically. Yeah. And I think there is probably a lot of people there that aren't doing video yet that you guys could probably talk to and just talk about some of the benefits of short form. I think we should get into some of the benefits of short form that you guys have seen. That we yeah. kind of touched on it a little bit there with like the social media thing, but I guess let's be a little more specific. Like, what it, what is like some of the successes that you guys have seen other podcasts have or other businesses have through short form video? Yeah, I mean, like we said, generating uh, or I guess growing an audience in general. Uh, you know, growing a personal brand is incredibly important you yeah. know, these days. I, I think everyone needs to work on growing a personal brand it's almost like the new business card yeah i mean that's why we we don't roll with you know business cards to these conferences because we're just like hey just follow our instagram that's that's all you need to know and you know everything um but i just got like one of those little tap cards and you either scan it or tap it yeah it has everything too i don't know if you guys saw my like it comes up with like your picture a little save contact and what what I'll do with it is I'll like pull it out, tap someone's phone, and then I just kind of like explain how it works. But really, me explaining how it works is me saving my contact in their phone. Yeah, so I you hit the that, save that contact. Was that was smart. Yeah, though. very smart. You hit the like save contact and show them how to do it. And you're like, yeah, isn't that crazy? And the next thing you know, their con- <laughs> your contacts in their phone, and then it pulls up with like as many links as you want to put too. So you could put like your website, your Instagram, LinkedIn, like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I died. Honestly, I might get one of those because they're dope they're, it's like 25 bucks too and oh, then you've just got yeah. it like indefinitely <laughs> it's like perfect for something like this yeah i mean i mean going back to the the whole short form it's also it's definitely big in generating leads for you know we we work with a lot of entrepreneurs and coaches and so short form has allowed these people to not only grow their personal brand but also give open people up to what they're selling Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a lot of people want help in different areas of, you know, like business and and whatnot. And and so but they just don't know where to start. One big thing with short form is like just growing your personal brand. I mean, that is I'd say that's like the number one thing. But, you know, in terms of these coaches, they always come to us and, um, you know, having the goal in mind that they're going to generate more leads and, and calls through these these short form videos, because. You know they're allowing they're allowing you know these new audiences to you know experience and and learn about what these people specialize in um so i'd say that you know short form is just the best way to showcase your knowledge to your potential clients and to deliver it to a lot of people at once yeah 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 possibly you know it i'd say you do it right exactly exactly so we can talk about how to do that we'll get into that for sure the other question i was going to ask you though is what have you seen like just being very involved in the coaching and entrepreneurial like online businesses space what have you seen working really well for a lot of these coaches Mm. um i would say the coaches that find the most success with the online content are going to be the ones that have some sort of way to monetize um, or just put out some sort of offer that they are getting traction from the short form content. So whether it's like their one-on-one coaching, their group coaching, a lot of times people have a course, you know, the online course creation is big these days. So um, even if it's like a lower ticket offer, like a masterclass, ebook, PDF guide, whatever they choose to monetize through, Um, those really just tend to explode, especially with the short form content. Very cool. So getting into short form content a little bit more, just how it's done properly. I think we should talk about just the best tactics that you guys have kind of learned through working with all these clients of just making good short form content that actually gets a lot of views, a lot of engagement, Mm -hmm. a lot of watch time. Yeah, we were, uh, we were actually just talking about this not too long ago. And, uh, dude, the biggest thing with short form is the hook. Yeah. Uh, you, you, like we live in a, a three second world and, you know, people's attention span is just so small mm-hmm. these days. And so if you don't immediately get them on that, you know, three second space, um, you know, it's it, the video is done for. Uh, if it can't capture the, the people's attention, then they're going to keep scrolling and your video is going to get lost. And then the algorithm's not going to push it. Could you talk about like hooks that you've seen work well, maybe even like some specific use cases or just general principles that you've seen work really well? Yeah, I feel like one of them, um, 
One of the big ones is like if you throw a number in there, so you could be like, here are top three reasons that you need to grow your social media. Here are the top five reasons that you are not succeeding with your short form content. Things like that uh, really tend to like, oh, shit, like, let me stick around for this video, stuff like that. And I think th that's a big goal, right, is getting people to stick around for the whole video because we had kind of talked about a little bit. And then uh, one of the speakers at the conference today went over this again in detail about how watch time, similar to a YouTube video, on any kind of short form content, watch time is going to be the biggest metric that you have to be yeah. really kind of moving towards. So if you get someone to stick around to the end by giving them like a number where they know that they need to listen to all the different things, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty big. Yeah, I'd say another thing uh, that I focus on with hooks is, you know, just understanding the audience. So what is their ultimate goal going to, you know, want to be, you know, are they going to want to grow on social media? You know, are they going to want to increase sales or something with their business? You always want to start the video off with, you know, a problem that they're experiencing. And that ultimately will grab their attention because they're like, oh, well, I want to learn how to, you know, do this or do yeah. that, you know. I agree. Speaking of hooks, too, one thing I'd also love to add, messaging, of course, is going to be the number one thing. I would put that as number one priority above everything. But another thing that we've been, like, experimenting with and even seeing, like, a lot of the big players in the space do is, like, some sort of visual hook. So whether that's, like, a quick oh, zoom yeah, in to start the video, about this, yeah. whether that's, like, um, a lot of big ones is, like, going sleeveless having like a sleeveless yeah. or wearing like dudes that wear like shorts in their videos we're that talking way. about alex hormozzi and Hermosi. how he's got like the full body shots of him sitting in a chair with yeah. like the, sh the, the shorts, shorts the really shorts, short yeah. jorts and yeah. like the tank top the wife beater you know his whole thing is the nose strip so he always has like his nose strip which even yes, to this yes. day oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. to this day I see comments that are like bro lose the nose strip lose I'm like man. you don't know Hermosi yeah. let him wear his nose strip yeah just have it basically just having something that's like out of the ordinary where it stops yeah. and it just Visually. it catches your attention because you're like what yeah, what am I visual. seeing right now yeah we, we've also seen this you know with people wearing like what was it uh, construction costumes yes, like for yeah. no reason either. there's one like, of Ryan Pineda he was wearing exactly. like a construction helmet and like vest exactly and sometimes it has nothing to do with what they're talking about in the video but it just it it's there it stops the scroll and exactly. that's that's ultimately your goal it might make so. you laugh a little bit and exactly. you stick around because exactly. of it it'll also generate comments and you mm -hmm. want people engaging in your posts you want people you know sharing it and you know that is something that people would share your post over you know exactly. hey why is this guy wearing a construction yeah. costume like his this guy just said the smartest thing i've heard all day but he was wearing like a <laughs> bunny rabbit costume yeah, like what's exactly. going on here exactly so exactly so yeah so aside from kind of focusing on the hook right what are some other things that you focus on with clients as far as like the video as a whole I'd just say the overall message. You yeah. want people, you know, once you get them to stick around because of the hook, you want them to continue to watch because you're providing constant value. If you get them with the hook and then immediately, like, cut off the value, then they're not going to want to stay. And that will ultimately, the algorithm will pick that up and they'll be, you know, it'll just say, oh, well, this, this video is not, you know, keeping people on more for more than three seconds. And so... Uh, it, we're not going to push it. So you want to keep them engaged. And honestly, the shorter, the better, because then that's the, the that's less time that you have to keep the audience's attention. Um, so, you know, I've always said to clients, like, get your point across as fast as possible, mm -hmm. but it, as fast and as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. You don't want to complicate things. People, people don't use big words. Use like plain, simple language exactly. that get across quick. Exactly. Captions, of course. Exactly. And that could be subjective, you know, depending on the space that you're in. Um, but yeah, a general rule is simple and, and quick. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk about just that came to mind that I wrote down is just the state of some of these channels at large. We were talking about like different news that's coming out about TikTok, like our thoughts on YouTube and on Instagram. In general, I guess we've got three big players right now between YouTube shorts, TikTok and Instagram reels for like good short form content delivery. What would you guys say? I guess you could each answer it. What is like your your preferred channel right now? Yeah. And why? I'd throw a real quick caveat in there and say instead of Instagram Reels, I'd categorize it as Meta 
Mm, so I think right. Facebook also has that's right uh, yeah. a big not that they're a big player but they're definitely a contender. So I yeah. kind of just categorize it as Meta, but still same yeah. things. And I, you do want to be taking advantage of it honestly, too, might, might as well. well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Different audience. Go ahead, Jimmy. I mean, I'd say for me, it's it's going to be either Reels or, sh- or Shorts, mm. TikTok. Um, you know, TikTok. which is interesting coming from you because you had so much success on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. TikTok, um, I mean, as we've heard, it, it, it may or may not be getting banned um, very soon. So, um, but, you know, the main reason is you, you it, it, it's weird because TikTok is a very good tool to grow an initial audience with. But the problem with TikTok is that you can't, you can only reach so much of your, you know, so many p- people, you know, that are following you. And so, uh, you know, you could have a million followers on TikTok, but not make a single dime from it. Yeah. Whereas, you know, on Instagram, if you have a million followers on Instagram, you're, you're doing pretty well. Yeah. So, um, one point that one of the speakers made and one of the events today, or maybe yesterday was that Instagram, you, you want to kind of use TikTok almost as like your initial grabber of new people, but then Instagram is a lot better for like building a community. Yeah. Like an actual, like strong followership. I'd use TikTok as an initial funnel um into your your instagram and your mm-hmm. and your youtube um i, I mean I, I mentioned youtube because as we've seen lately they're implementing the rev split so 49 percent revenue split on ads mm-hmm. um i think they've already already put that in place um yeah, so, so you know shorts are about to blow up i in my yeah. opinion i think they are because they are. i think they have been pretty consistently already and it's yeah. just going further and further yeah yeah and well and the and the cool thing about youtube the algorithm has it to where you can stop posting for months and still have a video blow up that mm-hmm. you know you posted maybe months ago or even a year ago um i have i'm I haven't posted in you know several months and still have get hundreds of thousands of views every month and so yeah. um you know, I love the the idea that YouTube focuses on pushing other people's uh, content. That you know, even if it's a little bit older, if it if it still matches the algorithm, then they're going to still push it. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, with that revenue split coming. I mean, that you you just have so much more money making potential. And we we're also talking about how YouTube just has so much more proven longevity to it. It's been around for a long time. It's mm-hmm. been making people money for a long time. It's done right by people for a long time yeah 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 and i don't i don't think youtube's going anywhere anytime soon i agree so really youtube it sounds like is probably the number one for both of you i agree yeah i have this thought exercise let's do it where if you could have a hundred thousand followers on any platform oh a hundred percent youtube hundred percent yeah i think that that's the no-brainer choice yeah i mean in my experience just with the podcast less than a year really so not a ton of experience to speak on but just like posting all my stuff for the podcast to or youtube seems like it's the the hardest like followers slash subscribers to come by but the stickiest and like the the most devoted like people take subscribing to a youtube channel pretty seriously Mm -hmm. yeah and they really they buy into the content pretty big time. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest difference between YouTube and Instagram is how connected you can be with your audience. Mm-hmm. I mean, YouTube, you can do it fairly, fairly well, but with Instagram, you have stories and you can interact with your audience like you can't on YouTube. I think there's a balance. I think. And uh, you do have stories on TikTok, but people don't really use them much. Like, I, I know for one, I don't really ever watch them. I'll watch Instagram stories, but I never really watch TikTok stories. Yeah, and I think they they also have stories on YouTube, um, mm-hmm. but same same thing. It's like it's not. That it's big. just not what you're going there for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, to same thing. I I I would definitely go with a hundred thousand followers on uh, or subscribers, I guess, on YouTube over you know a hundred thousand on Instagram, but. I'd instantly start funneling those follow or subscribers into followers onto onto Instagram. Yeah, just kind of fill it out there. Yeah, because I mean, I now I guess it depends on maybe what you're selling. Um, but you know, in my case, an agency would do a lot better in terms of you know 
being able to connect with my audience on, on Instagram. So. Agreed. Yeah. I think people very much look to Instagram to check out a business like an Instagram, like we were kind of saying before with like just sending someone to your Instagram at like a networking event, people very much use Instagram as kind of the new website. I would social say proof for sure. it's social proof. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't really like you, you probably do look up a business's website, but if you're talking about like a service based thing, you're probably looking up someone's Instagram and like how, how, uh, built out is their business on Instagram. It's like you said, social proof. Yeah, 100%. So what are some other kind of just macro trends that you guys see from the inside of like where the industry is moving right now? Like what are some things that kind of catch your radar and get you thinking? Yeah, um, I mean, I think I think we're still moving strong with short form and I think, I think the captions are like the biggest thing in short mm-hmm. form right now. By far captions, have have captions. very, very fast paced. Um, moving animated captions. I think that's that's where we're going right now, and have been going for a, a, you know a few months now. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's where I'm really diving into as of as of right now. How do you guys stay educated on the space? Um, a lot of it's like looking at some of the big players and seeing what they're doing. But I think also the whole point of the captions too and like trying to dress them up as much as possible is is if you just take a step back and look at like why are we doing this, it's all for pattern interrupt. The pattern interrupt with the sound effects, the um, like if you zoom in on some words on the, like the important words of the captions, if you have any like emojis that you use in your mm-hmm. captions, it's all just to create a pattern interrupt to keep the viewer engaged. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, We, me, my team and I joke, we use, like, you guys know Peppa Pig, the kids yeah. show? Yeah. yeah. We literally use the exact same colors in our captions that Peppa Pig uses in their TV show. That's and funny. there's reason for that, the yellow, the green. Yeah. And that's because those are the colors that really catch the attention mm-hmm. and cause the pattern interrupt. Um, so that's what I think the whole point of the captions is, the visual um just the visual eye-catching thing that keeps people engaged also um i know you shared with me you ran that poll of like how many people view content with their volume on mute versus their volume on yeah and i think my results were basically that people about 60 percent at least of my audience said they they watch most videos with the with the volume off Mm -hmm. so that told me like the just to double down on having the captions, I was kind of going back and forth with my editor for my for my clips, and he thought it wasn't too important if, like, he'll put some B-roll in some of the clips, and he was doing the captions first and on a on like a third party thing, and then bringing it into Premiere Pro and putting the B-roll on. Mm-hmm. He thought it wasn't that big of a deal if some of the B-roll was going over the captions and parts, and I was like, I don't know, I think we should do the captions after so that they're there the whole time, mm-hmm. and like if 60% of people are watching without the volume on and they miss a couple seconds of the message, it's kind of a big deal. I so I thought like, yeah, like you got to have the captions the whole time. Yeah. And I mean, it, it also goes down to science. I, I hate to bring up the science, but I mean, people are, are more likely to retain information when they both have the audio aspect and the visuals. Yeah. So if they're reading the text and hearing it at the same time, they're going to retain the information more. And that's ultimately what you want your audience to, to get, take away from your videos. Yeah. So. so what are some of the big things that you guys hope to see from both of your businesses over the next couple of years? What are you excited for and working on? You got that one. Okay. Um, yeah. One of the big things that my team and I have a goal on is just really working with a lot of higher caliber clients and really trying to help them make more money through expanding their offers. Uh, my team and I were very blessed to create an online course as well and help over 300 other videographers run their business and wow. make more money for their team. That's awesome. So just we want to extend that same blessing to other online coaches and course creators as well and um, just kind of help them realize that they can add another stream of revenue through online products and especially through short form content is the kind of the head front of that. Nice. Awesome. What about you, JB? I'm focusing on the agency and, and growing my clients right now. I mean, I, I only started a few months ago, mm-hmm. so I mean, we're going strong as is. But Killing I definitely want to, yeah, I definitely want to, d- definitely want to grow, you know, more there. And then also, I, I would love to to implement a course. Um, I think that'd be a great way to. I've always been a community type guy, so you know, I've always been in the the you know the masterminds and stuff, and I just love community. And so, building a course, I feel like I could also implement that community aspect and. 
just share share my knowledge on social media and social media growth. And um, you know, sure. I I think the thing that I love to see is people, other people winning. And you know, social media has changed my life, and so I I love to share you know everything I can to to help it change other people's lives. So love that. And top three, top two to three takeaways from each of you from the conference we just won to. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, I, I, I'd say, you know, one big thing is that people don't utilize short form. I mean, it's, it's either that or they don't, they don't utilize the, the video aspect for their podcasts. Um, you know, I've, I've been surrounded, I don't know about you, but I've always been surrounded by people who understand the game, who understand social media, who understand online business and, and that's just because I indulge in those masterminds and the communities and, you know, very high caliber people. But, you know, when you go to the podcast like or a conference like this, you know, it really opens you up to you know, how many people need to learn about this. Yeah. And so um, the state of the market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very uneducated. Yeah. <laughs> very. Yeah. Which means there's a lot of opportunity. A lot of opportunity. And a big point that they made in the conference is they were talking about just the amount of active podcasts right now there's a misconception that Mm. like a lot of numbers show that there are you know there's like 4.7 million podcasts out there which there are but about 370,000 of them are actually active yeah meaning having 10 or more episodes and having posted just in the last 90 days Mm. yeah which if you took a small like another subset of that like the amount that are like active weekly and like more than like 30 episodes it probably dwindles an even, even smaller further. percentage yeah well, i see you my man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's like me. and and it's really not that i mean it takes a decent amount of work you've got to like for sure put some things like you get some things automated behind you and like have some people help you a lot of times but it really it's pretty attainable yeah yeah, yeah i'd say another takeaway was exactly that it's just how many people I and mean, now this could be just be me being naive but i didn't realize how many people ran podcasts so um you know for us the opportunity is out there um to help people and help people succeed um, i think the podcast community is a very growing uh community and has a lot of potential for success yeah and so if you can do it right and you can grow it right and market it right then you can you can help out a lot of people 100 percent I agree. So uh, I have a couple repeat questions that I told you guys about off air. I think we'll go ahead and get into those. So the first one that I told you guys about is um, that I would use kind of like when you both got into video as like the starting point for this. But if you could travel back in time and talk to a younger JB, a younger Andrew, just tell them, kind of share a little bit of the wisdom and the knowledge that you have now going through some of this. What are a couple things you would tell them to do differently? Either one of you could start. Start them off, JB. You know, I'd say I'd probably tell my my younger self that you just need to not slow down, but, you know, just enjoy the process. I, you know, a lot of things, I, I mean, the past two years feel like they've just breezed by. And so I'd say, you know, enjoy the growth and enjoy the process. It sounds super cliche, but, you know, you don't want to miss out on, on those important wins, um, whether they're small or big. And that's something that I think is important to remember, you know, as you're growing as an entrepreneur. 100%. I love it. I'm going to go a little bit more technical. Nice. Uh, We've been talking about YouTube. That's the one thing that my personal biggest regret is. Uh, You know, speaking as a video guy myself, I spend all this time assisting all of my clients with building their online personal brands. Um, and really having that personal brand in business is a cheat code. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, you know, if you have an online audience, you can really sell anything to them that you'd like as long as it's, you know, ethical, whatever. So yeah, um, that's the one thing that I regret most is not starting my YouTube channel earlier and like not going as hard as I know that I could even to this day. Yeah. And my other question for you both. So the show is profession session, really part of the the theory I have with the show is that professions can look very different from like one to the other. And there's a lot of good ways to make a profession, Mm -hmm. but what does it mean to both of you personally to be a professional, to be an expert in your field and be able to help others, um, you know, get to your level. Um, I think just understanding 
every little aspect of your field, every little technique, and and I guess I guess it really depends on on what you're in, but yeah, just an expert in your field and, and understanding it completely. Love it. I like it. I'd say for myself, it's just being kind of a, a man or a business, a company of principles, uh, making sure that you really stick to everything that you preach. We have this thing in our company. Um, you know, we're all about short form, and so that's how we get all of our clients. We post short form videos of ourselves and get the inbound leads as well. So, um, really, if you are a personal trainer, you got to be a personal trainer who's in shape. If you're mm. a plumber, you know, you got to make sure your pipes are not leaking. Yeah. So, really, just living the sure. brand. Yeah, living the brand, living, walking the walk, talking the talk, if you will. Love it. Anything else you guys would want to share with the audience? Just take take advantage of short form why you yeah. can. Yeah. I, I would I mean, yeah, that's that's where the market's going and yeah. You have to. You can't be on you can't be online, you can't be a podcast, you can't be a coach if you're not taking You can't really grow a business, honestly. Like I mean you you can grow it to a certain point through word of mouth, but you're only gonna get so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like you used a couple times, it's a it's a cheat code really. Yeah. Right now. It's just the, the attention is there. Yeah. And it's up for grabs. It's a gold rush, really. Yeah, no, it's it's a cheat code. And I actually I don't I think people don't understand how easy it is to grow on social media when you understand the the principles. I think it's one of the most valuable skills you can have. And if you understand the principles of social media and, you know, I guess how the human mind works, then you can be successful on social media easily. I think people overestimate the the amount of work and effort that it takes. Yeah, it does take a lot, but it's the steps and the rules are there. Yeah. You just got to post every day, bro. Yeah, dude, yeah. Consistency, consistency. Consistency. Dude, mm-hmm. consistency is the biggest thing. And it's, it's. I mean, that's that's what happened when I, when I, you know, went viral. I, I had that initial viral video and I had all this excitement and all this dopamine, you know, rushing in because I had never gone viral before. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so after that, you know, I, I had to stick to my w- rule of posting every single day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it wasn't it wasn't until five months later until I got my my next viral video but I mean Mm. I wouldn't have been at 500,000 followers if I hadn't just stuck to the consistency so yeah that's where a lot of people quit I think is not staying consistent so definitely yeah Yeah. well thank you guys so much JB and Andrew for coming on this has been awesome 100% yeah thanks for having us yeah